Jennifer Edwards, psychic medium. Oh, Janine, this has been a long time between cups of tea, hasn't it? I know so much has happened since the last video we did. Huge to both of us. And yes. Also to the world. We've both had relocations yeah. and we're all plugged in and ready to go and start a new chapter. Yes, and uh, hopefully upwards, you know, um, I think we're all over the, the stress and turmoil and the um, lack of direction that we've all yeah. had. Yeah. So, so yeah. what I thought... What I thought today, Jennifer, is you and I are doing a workshop in a couple of weeks here on the Gold Coast on the 14th of August on the Gold Coast and see our uh, Facebook page, Janine and Jenny, for more details. So in the lead up to that, I thought we could do a video just to, to get us back into sync with each other. And you gave us the brilliant idea that we should do another talk on Australia and what's going on with Australia. Now, you and I don't usually do what we call in astrology, mundane astrology. We don't usually do readings on countries, but it is really fun when we do. So we did one two years ago, almost to the date, in the middle of the crisis. I remember it being very grim when we did our last video on Australia. And uh, we both had a go at predicting what might happen mm -hmm. so jennifer can you tell us what we talked about in that last reading and you can find that last video on our facebook post if you scroll back two years yeah. or on youtube it's on youtube on too. youtube yeah um you know i haven't looked at it for two years so i have no idea um, but one of the things I remember being really puzzled, Janine, with one of the things that Spirit gave me after you talked about your astrology for Australia and um, was that I could see this mass exodus of um, people from a southern state and uh, or from the middle of the southern, you know, it's down south but in the middle of Australia. And, of course, we know now Victorians fled their state in droves and still yeah. doing it. um so I guess that and I saw them all going to the east mainly to the east coast which is and Queensland which is where they went mm. so that was interesting because I didn't know why yeah yeah well we didn't at that point that was really in the heat of it all where we had restrictions and we weren't sure what was going to happen what I do remember talking about is that we would turn a corner economically in 2021. And that seemed completely absurd because I think not long after we did that video, they announced that there was a recession. But I still maintained that we would start a whole new economic cycle in the new year, which was six months later in yeah. early 2021. And that's because the planet Saturn was on our sun and Saturn had crossed the ascendant. And I'm going to just share the screen so that we can have a look at the Australia chart while we're talking. Okay. Just for a little while. Yep. Uh, so Saturn was just crossing the ascendant here, which means there's a whole new chapter. And I did feel very strongly at that point that we would have an economic boom of some sort. Now, because property is such a strong indicator in our chart for Australia, I did predict that we'd have some sort of a boom that would be um, uh, very materialistic for us. So it wouldn't wow. be a technology boom. It would be something very material. And, wow. and we did. We had a property boom, which just huge. go figure. Nobody could work out really huge. why that was happening. Huge. We've had a huge property boom. That's a in Incredible, that. Mm. and especially and 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 sales in a lot of retail shops went up. You know, all the deliveries at home yeah. and everything was locked up. How many businesses boomed? And and Amazing. we still can't work out why, how. It was all very unpredictable, wasn't it? Which is very Aquarius, yeah. an unpredictable boom. I'm not sure that other countries followed the no, same suit as us. No, they didn't. Apparently, we were. Um, again unique in the world yes, very unique and of course we've got so much Aquarius in in the Australian chart where 
Aquarius rising, we've got Sun, Pluto, mm. uh, Saturn and Venus all in Aquarius. And for the astrologers watching, I use a whole sign uh, house system, so it might look slightly different to yours. But, of course, Aquarius is about being individual and unique. And when we had the global financial recession, we were economically unique then too. Mm -hmm. And here we are again in an economically unique boom during a COVID crisis. So nice. I do remember talking about that. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop sharing for a moment. Uh, so today what I wanted to talk about is what happened after that and what's ahead for Australia. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe looking at the chart, our big COVID crisis came early this year, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that they were telling us we were in a COVID crisis in 20 and 21, but it looks to me like we were suffering really not until earlier this year. This year has been quite bad. Yeah. So even though we were told about the crisis overseas and we were anticipating it and we behaved as if we were, if this astrology chart was a person, I would say they were going to get sick in January, February of this year. Mm. And I'm from Queensland and I noticed everybody went down here. Yeah. Well, whereas, whereas prior to that, we heard about it, but we didn't really experience it so I know us Queenslanders we've been sick ever since up here and I think New South Wales has been pretty similar and I'm not sure about Victoria. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. and in yeah. South Australia now and it's chock-a-block in the hospitals. Yeah. So it's everywhere. Mm. And that is if I just start sharing again that is the effect of Saturn on Pluto in the first house. The first house is the physical body. So it's the physical body of the people and the physical body of the land. And when Saturn uh, goes over Pluto, and Pluto represents infections and all things grave and serious. When Saturn was over Pluto, I believe we were at our sickest. Okay. And we're still at the tail end of that now. Now, the next thing that Saturn does on its journey over three years is it hits itself at birth. So we have a Saturn return coming up. Now, if you've been around the block listening to astrologers for a while, you'll know that the Saturn return is a very big deal in, in someone's life. So we have one at 28 and one at 58. But in, um, in a country, we have one every 29 years. So we've got one coming up and we've got one coming up in the new year in 2023 and we'll start to feel the effect of that now. And what happens in a Saturn return is we, we, uh, we hit a wall. So mm -hmm. we hit fear, we hit hardship, we hit desperation and then we have to make some very concrete changes. And we all know when we were 29, this happened, and to a lesser extent, uh, 58. I don't know how many Saturn returns Australia's had. And just by the way, I'm taking um, the Discovery Day of Australia as a chart. Some people don't, but um, I'm taking when white person people landed. Uh, so I don't know how many Saturn returns we've had, but if I just extrapolate here, I'd say Australia is going to hit a wall. And it will be later this year and early next year. And we're going to have to take this very seriously. The good news is it doesn't last forever. So I would say between one and two years and the effect of it three years at the most. But it's really going to be a change of gear, like we're changing from second gear to third gear. It's a complete change in the way we do things. I think there's going to be changes to do with property. And the reason why I think that is because Saturn is conjunct Venus and Venus represents wealth, i.e. money, and also represents property. So I think the Saturn return is going to drag in issues around property. And it's very hard to predict all the details, but I can say that this is going to be around um, individuality, which is an Aquarius thing like, people's personal freedoms are going to be, um, uh, you know, addressed, looked at. There's going to be change around our personal liberties, around property and money. 
there's going to be um, issues come up around community as well, which is another Aquarius thing. Community, sharing, um, uh, making sure that everybody gets a fair deal, making sure everything's equal. So it's really hard to know. I can, I can look at it from the outside, but I don't know exactly how that's going to affect us. But the end result will be um, a growth spurt. Now, when you finish your Saturn return as a human, you become more mature. So I can only gather that, you know, some hardship, us hitting the wall economically is going to result in a much stronger economy, a much stronger country. But there will be some suffering, there's no doubt. So can I ask a few questions in here, Janine, just oh. to clarify it for people listening? So I just want to ask, what the, what's the first house mean? If you can. First house in a human is their body. Okay. So health issues come from about In Australia is about the island itself. It's okay. about the land. Yep. The structures. And the, the people's physical bodies in on the land. On the land. So it's the health of the nation. Okay. So when a person goes through Saturn return, it's usually, you know, I guess they used to call it a midlife crisis. And when you're younger, it's, you know, a big change. Am I with the right person, doing the right job, living in the right state? Do I want to travel overseas? Do I want to get married and have kids? Whatever it is. So if we, if we put that onto Australia, maybe it's also about are we going in the right direction? Yep. Maybe change of direction. Maybe it's um, about... Um, <clears throat> about looking at the laws and bringing changes in there. Yep. Maybe it's about people um, waking up a bit more and demanding um, more, more transparency, don't want to walk this path anymore, want to do a different, want to do right-hand turn. Mm. That, that may be in, involved in it. Usually with Saturn, there's, first comes the hardship. And Saturn likes to obstruct and stop and slow down. So I'm figuring, we, like I said, we're going to hit some sort of wall economically where things are just not going to look like they're progressing. And then we have to workshop that and nut out the problems and do a lot of problem solving in yes. order to, you know, reboot and start again. So there'll be hardship first. Saturn takes away before it you know, it's the hard taskmaster. It yeah. says, I'm going to remove your privileges so yeah. that you can become a stronger person. So I'm predicting that we will have financial hardship before oh. we sort of re do a reboot, a retake and plan a better way. Well, with Saturn, I know Saturn very well and uh, it won't be easy. It won't be easy and everything you try will be a dead end lots yeah. of times. So we'll get to some dead ends. There's, there's things that are definitely not going to work mm -hmm. and it ties Venus in with it at the same time, which is about money yeah. and it's also about property. You yeah. know, Venus is about the things that you value and the material world. So I think for the material world of a country is money and property mm -hmm. and possessions. So we may not be making as much profit out of our land and the value of our housing and our material world and we're going to have to you know it's going to pull back before we can refocus and make a better plan so there's a big reassessment phase coming possibly a change in government um yeah so would it also affect things like mining um agriculture uh, possibly only agriculture, not mining. Okay. Yeah, no, agriculture is also the fruit of the land, which mm -hmm. is Venus. So definitely all the things we produce on the land from the things that we own, and that Venus does include livestock. Okay. Wow. Okay. So That's for the know, next two, two to three years, you think? Yeah, and we'll start to feel the pinch after Christmas. So it could be drought recession mm -hmm. it could be devaluing of our economy in some way um but you know the good 
good thing is it's not a long period of time. Saturn will sort of make this process of hardship to maturity. It'll, it'll do it in a couple of years at the most. So I would not be planning to invest next year. Mm. I and if, if you do and you're waiting for a return, wait longer, yeah. you know, maybe wait five years instead of, you know, having a quick turnaround of your investments in a year or two. Next year is not good. Now, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've been telling me this for a few months, haven't you? I have. Um, a bit, I did a reading for someone and she is in finance and um, she asked me about um investments and I was a bit taken back actually to see that next year is going to be very difficult as far as companies go mm. I feel like there may be some bigger companies that will downsize or disappear mm. and um, I think that's slowly starting in the construction industry it's mainly in Victoria at the moment um, but next year, there's going to be some um, bigger companies uh, that we thought would never fail or um, decrease in size is going to happen. Yeah. It's well, that, that ties in because Saturn is all about failure. When you hit a Saturn return, usually you fail at something. Yeah. And things just don't work the way they were and you, you get asked to let that go. Yeah. Let all your failures go, pull your socks up and work hard to achieve a different outcome. So failure's off in the beginning. Yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be next year that it that it happens, starts happening. Mm. Um, I also felt that for next I, I do feel next year is gonna be very difficult for a lot of mm. people. It's not going to be the same. And I always tell people, you know, just enjoy your life <laughs> because next year is going to be tough. It's going to be the beginning of toughness. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But I'm mainly looking at the financial oh. um, industry here. Um, it's And that affects people from the poorest to the wealthiest. And let me yeah. tell you, in the long run, the wealthy will not, not be affected. They will. Yeah. So um, there's going to be poor and wealthy alike who lose a lot of money. Oh, wow. And um, it's going to be a big shock to a lot of people because they think they're invincible and they're not going to be. So it's going to be a real leveller, I feel, oh. uh, in some ways. And not one hit everyone, but it will hit, it will hit more than we would want. Oh, wow. um, and so... The other thing that I feel, I, I just feel there's a big shock coming. So um, do you, in your chart there, do you see um, much in earth changes coming? I think we've had a lot of earth changes in Australia. While Saturn's been going through the first house, this is all about our Earth changes in Australia. As for the general Earth, I can't see that, but certainly in Australia we've had that. And have we not had a lot of landscape movement go on? We've had fires and we've had a lot of floods in the last two to three years, and that's the impact of Saturn going through the first house because the landscape is the body of the country. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think most of what Australia is going to experience is um, has already been. But what do you think? Well, I think, well, as you were talking about our last video, one of the things I did cut out, as if you remember, you know, I said there was going to be a lot of flooding on mm. the coast of, of Australia. I said that two years ago, but I cut it out because everyone was so depressed. <laughs> I didn't think they needed to do that on top. I so, know, and I reminded you recently that there's a lesson in that as a psychic yeah, medium. Never cut out your best predictions. <laughs> that's true. Because they probably come true and then nobody will give you any credit for it. No, that's right. So 
Um, what I said then was that there was a lot of um, flooding coming to the East Coast, and um, but I also saw a lot of people going to the East Coast and Queensland to live. Mm. But I still don't feel it's over, Janine. Not quite. Don't feel it's over yet. I, I still feel that there's going to be, because in that prediction, I also saw it affecting New Zealand very badly, and it hasn't done that as yet. My problem is when I do some predictions like this, I can sometimes be five years ahead. Mm. And so then I just think, oh, you know, I got that wrong, but mm. it comes true. Mm. So um, that's my biggest difficulty is timing. But I still feel, and I'm going to stand by it, there will be a massive flooding along the east coast of Australia that comes from the sea, not from our water in the rivers. I feel it will come from the sea. It will affect New Zealand a great deal. And um, I still think that's to come yet. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe in the Saturn return of three years, maybe it will happen in that period. Yeah. But uh, because if it's about new changes, new changes, um, for me, Saturn returns are about um, starting a new life and as I said you know looking at things and changing things to make it better or rebuilding just, there's rebuilding. a lot of rebuilding that has to so that that's a great word so rebuilding so yes I still feel there's more to come mm. I mean, the east coast somehow um, yeah. and from the sea that's what I think mm. um, and it will affect New Zealand a lot so I do feel we'll have a lot of refugees over from New Zealand as well wow. um, um the big changes around Australia that I see coming in the future won't won't happen for a long, long time. But this this will be the start. And it's going to start in the Pacific Ocean there, um, further up towards the northern hemisphere, and it will come, come down that way. That's what I feel. Um so I also feel that there may be uh, problems, therefore, maybe it's because of it or maybe it's because of um, changes in energy. I, f oh, I feel the southern states are going to get very cold and I feel like it's because um, there's going to be a big energy supply problem for heating as well. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you know, get some solar or get some wood stoves or something. The other thing I wanted to say is um, they keep saying the climate change is going to get warmer. I think it's going to get colder. Well, that's, that's really going to affect a lot of people's predictions, isn't it? Yes. I think there's going to be a cool change, not a hot change. Now, I'm saying that some places will suddenly get hot weather like UK is having now, right? But Overall, I feel it will be cooler. Mm. Overall, I don't well, feel that's the gods playing a cosmic joke on us, isn't yeah. it? Because <laughs> we're all believing that it's warming, and then they're going, "Well, we'll show you you what's going on. You yeah. don't tell us what's going on." <laughs> no, that's right. And I also feel that there'll be changes in the sky as well coming. That will start next year. Mm. Wow, well, they're all the things I can't see. What I thought we could talk about is, you know, I know that there may be some wealth issues in our country coming up, yeah. um, some restrictions around the economy and rebuilding and all of that. That that can be a little bit daunting. So what I thought I'd look at, Jennifer, is what to invest in in Australia. Right. If you wanted to make money in Australia, what what is what are the good industries? in yep. Australia to invest in and work in. Or even to start. Yeah, yeah. So Australia's second house of money and income is ruled by Pisces. Now, <clears throat> that means Australia's good at all things to do with Pisces and Pisces rules water and gas, <laughs> okay? So we're very good at making money out of our water which includes our beaches. Mm -hmm. So we're very good at making money out of the shoreline and how much industry is on the shoreline 
Heaps. Almost all of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything to do with water, and that includes, you know, um, water energy. I mean, I'm all for desalination, even though that's a contentious issue, but making money out of the ocean itself, making money out of things like dams, hydro, uh, uh, and all of those things, boating, yachting, you know, harbours, things like that, anything to do with the water. It also rules gas. So, of course, we've got big gas plants in Australia. It rules things like oil as well, oil and petrol and all things that are liquid. And mm -hmm. how much industry is around creating liquids in this country? Well, we have got so much gas. We've got 200 years of supply of gas in Australia. Mm despite what they're telling us. Yeah, that that's right. We do have 200 years of uh, gas supplies sitting mm, mm. Um, to be mined. Yeah. So there's, there's those very traditional areas of income to invest in. Mm. Now, some would say, you know, invest, you know, maybe 50 or 100 years ago, it looked like farming was the great investment, but this is not farming. This is not agriculture and we're really not making that much money out of those areas anyway. And if we did, it, it's quite transitory. But certainly uh, water and gas and oil are what Australia will consistently make money out of. And then you've got the other aspect. Sorry, we're going to say something? So we could, you could also include in that hydroponics. Hydroponics. Now I'm going to get creative. Um. The other areas of Pisces are things like um, the arts. So music, music, um, music, sound and, and imagery, like graphic design, pictures, paintings, um, uh, things that are beautiful, things that we create that are escapism as well. Mm -hmm. to invest in like virtual reality and things like that um and then you've got the downside of pisces oh actually i was going to say welfare pisces rules welfare and have we not got one of the biggest welfare departments in the in, in of any country so there's a lot of money to be made in welfare and that includes like social work human services um not-for-profit organisations. That's right. Yeah, humanitarian uh, projects. And then we, uh, social services, Centrelink, uh, Medicare, things like that. I mean, huge industries. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're government run, but they do provide a huge amount of income to uh, providers attached to the welfare system. And then you've got all the illegal things. Now, Pisces does rule some illegal activities like drugs. So there's a lot of money to be made in drugs, unfortunately, in this country. There's a lot of money to be made in secret enterprises. So Pisces it can be quite shady. So it's about, you know, smoke screens and doing things behind the scenes, including uh, drug operations drugs and crime. So they're the three areas of Pisces that I thought are really interesting to discuss. And we're not talking, we're not saying that other industries don't boom and they may be transitory, but these are the consistent ones, the consistent, reliable um, industries to invest in that just don't change no matter what happens it doesn't change so with all of this flux in the economy what are the go-to industries in this country interesting that real estate is not part of this picture so it may be that there's money to be made in real estate but that's just a phase it's not right. always going to be like that well it's interesting you talk about the dark side of Pisces i am just finished reading uh, a new book out on the dark side of finances in Australia. And the most interesting thing when you talk about real estate, it's not part of it. It actually is um, because that's where the dark money goes into. 
Oh, true, true. Um, money laundering, money, yeah. Money laundering is going through offshore accounts into Australia through the real estate industry and of course they refuse Australia refuses to do anything about it we're the most lax in the world and they won't fix it yeah, um, yeah. also interesting that you said that about drugs because we are the biggest payers in the world for drugs yeah and that includes medication and illegal drugs anything yes. that's escapist yes. so whether we're talking about painkillers or we're talking about heroin it's yep. all the same. Yep. And they can they funnel a lot of drugs into Australia because they get not 10 times but a thousand times more for the drugs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. And and Australia is considered at the moment to be uh the country, the go-to country to launder money. Mm, amazing. All, all, all countries in the world, Australia is pinpointed and New Zealand. So that's really interesting that we've got that. But it, I don't believe that real estate's always going to be a booming industry here. Oh, no, no, everything has its cycles. Mm. The downturn in real, real estate starts next year. Yeah. Probably the yeah. end of this year. But and then I think we're going to be on a budget for a few years. But, but there's always you know, consistent industries. And we, we found that through COVID, some industries strengthened. Yes, they did. So, and some industries were very weak. Yep, yep. So um, it's just amazing. There were hum human beings are very um, entrepreneurial, aren't they, really, at mm. base. And so if something is restricted we're like water really we've we'll go around the corners or through the cracks and find a new way to bring an income in or to start a business mm -hmm. you know there's many businesses that started in Australia that have ended up being large businesses from mm. I remember when everybody was losing their jobs during COVID and then at the tail end of all that the the, the research showed that there were three top professions to get into post COVID. And I think one of the top one was nursing for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. And then there was human services, you know, like welfare. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely Pisces, mm -hmm. you know, anything where we, you know, hospitals are ruled by Pisces, mm -hmm. hospital, jails, um, anywhere where we care for people who are wounded. Right. Okay, so it's interesting that we made that prediction that they're the top two professions to get involved in. And then you had all these people that were unemployed enrolled for nursing and there were mass subsidies in education at that time. Yes, that's true. And of course, okay. as you know, I, I work with, I work in the drug and alcohol sector and we didn't suffer during COVID. No. Mm. So they're the healthy industries to be involved in. Mm. And the public service, of course, didn't suffer. No. Either. No. So. And we'll always have a strong public service yep. by the look of this chart. The other strengths that we have in our country is over here, sport, sport, recreation, games and leisure. So, you know, if you if you want to be in a successful industry, I mean, all the ones that I mentioned are good for creating salary and making money. But if you want to get involved in a successful industry, we'll always be good at sport. We'll always be the leisure continent, hmm. the, the, the place where people go for holidays and entertainment. So casinos are always going to be big for us, mm. especially Gemini in the area of leisure and games and risk-taking. Um, Gemini is all about using wit and cleverness. So gambling is going to be a big part of our economy in the future. It is. It already is. It's mm. huge. And uh, Geminis do get bored easily. Yeah. So, you know, we need. they need a lot of um, things to do. And Gemini also rules computers. Mm. Now, one of my clients has made his fortune on online gambling. 
And during COVID, he stopped the in-person ticket, you know, the, the hard copy ticket production and went completely to online. And so I think, you know, with Gemini there, technology and gambling is also a big industry to get into. Mm. You know, all the, the, the betting online, the, you know, entertainment online. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So there's a few pluses for our audience who might be involved in different types of professions. Mm. Had you thought of that before, gambling and, and I, in those areas? Uh, well, I ha hadn't come into my mind to look at it, but I knew the gambling industry in Australia is massive. Mm. It's huge, huge. We've got all the vices we're very good at. That's actually very true. We're very good at having a good time. Yes. I don't, and that fifth house is all about how we like to play. And yes. with Jupiter there, we play to excess in Australia. Everything we we do for pleasure is to excess. Exactly. And hence, we're a very addicted nation for that reason, whereas other countries do things quite moderately. Yeah, and... Um, um, Oh, it's gone from my head. I was going to say something about gambling. It's gone. I'll oh, just. Mm. I'm um, talking about living it up, drinking a lot, taking drugs. You know, sex comes into it too. You know, all of the the fun stuff. We we do more and more and more with Jupiter there, and Chiron's there too, which which means that we suffer a lot through it it's not just fun we actually get sick from it I should that's what I was going to say I should imagine that area will probably explode if there's a downturn mm. people do tend to gamble more to earn money quickly if they need it so yeah. would that also cover things like um, um, short-term loan sector and financial sectors you know the short yeah. loan charts and things like that may also yeah. bloom yeah, all the things we do to get off, yeah. you know, to release stress, we do everything to excess. We party hard, we gamble hard, we we do hard drugs, yeah. you know, we even, you know, our risk-taking enterprises, you know, we might do them to excess. Yeah, we do. You know, you know predicting on the stock market, doing too much of that um so yeah there's another angle as to what's ahead so when things get tough we might do a lot more excessive um uh recreational activities on the other I, side I, I would absolutely hazard a guess that will happen yeah there you go so that's about all I have to say anything else you want to say Jennifer um, well I was just going to ask you um so through this Saturn return, um, and I can see there's some uh, businesses that won't stay afloat or will downsize. Um, I'm just wondering how will migration or um, will there be a migration of people around Australia or out of Australia, do you think? I I don't see that being involved in this. I think we've had that. Okay. I think our mig migration issues to and from Australia or around the states have already occurred in this, this phase. So I can't say anything else. I wouldn't be surprised if gender issues come up quite strongly next year, you know, whether there's a, a stronger Me Too movement for women or you know, a transgender political statement the government make, I wouldn't be surprised if that's tied in. Okay. You know, some sort of uh, legislation around marriage, divorce, relationships, gender. It, so it, it may come into it, but I, I don't see migration themes. Okay. Um, so with the Saturn return that's coming, um, starting, um, 
would that also affect if you're saying it's affecting people's body our country people's body so it could also be a change in um weather structure it could be a change in uh, could could also if it's affecting people's body maybe there's more sicknesses or death happening next year yeah there could be that too I think it's not so much the atmosphere. I think it's the effect that the atmosphere has on the land itself. Oh, so, I mean. you know, droughts and floods and the effect on the land is mm. the issue. Mm. Okay. Um, well, and I think the coldness theory is really interesting because Saturn is a cold planet. Oh. It's, a, it's a, a planet of hardship, but also feeling cold you know yeah. they've all got their you know mars is a hot planet saturn's a cold planet and i think that's i think you might be onto something there we might have some very very cold weather that affects our affects the the ecosystems you know yeah. to create some sort of i don't know about i don't know about drought but some sort of dryness or some sort of barrenness yeah because saturn's a barren sort of starving cold planet yeah, it's it's a it's a definitely a planet of a shortage of resources shortage of resources and exactly. so i think maybe you might be on planet about water uh with um not only maybe a shortage of water although it's going to be cold i don't think it's that so much but maybe growing things may be hard so maybe yeah need to do hydroponics in a shed or in glass houses or you know um in not all states but some states um so there may be a shift in the way we grow things as well it won't be so open and you know um we've got so much good luck with growing food maybe there may be a change in how we approach that mm, i think you're on to something when you said lack of resources i went that is what it is yeah. it's a lack of resources and what those resources are i would love to know well they'll be money. and i'd invest in them yeah yeah so it even be just a shortage in the supermarket chains oh, there will be those things that's culture shortage oh. of supplies so um yeah if you want to stock up stock up on water material supplies maybe not stock up on housing just at this time yeah. <laughs> and get some money get some cash money around um, yeah. um, for you to in case the banks close yeah. um, so if you want me to I have a look myself and see I don't know whether I'll get anything because um, I think we've covered most of it did you do any did you have a look at the Victorian chart by any chance no I didn't maybe we should do that in another video yeah, because it'd be really interesting to see what's going to happen with Dan although I, did, we, I think we brought that up in the last one I must go back and listen to that um so let me just have a look here I know you mentioned there may be a change of government I was talking to another psychic in Adelaide who's quite well known um around Australia male and he thought there would be a change of government as well oh. he yeah thought there would be a whole lot of independence in and they couldn't govern well that hasn't happened um but um you saying there might be a change of government mm, there might be so let's have a look um so when i when i tune into canberra what i get mainly is um like a volcanic eruption happening in in canberra now that's not literal because it's not likely to happen but if we, we if we take it as symbolic um meaning i think there may be an earthquake or um, a big eruption in in canberra that causes um that causes damage maybe to the sitting government right or um maybe it's going to come up under they're showing me it's coming up unearthing under. Yeah. unearthing and and could that be metaphorical like corruption or something yeah. like that unearthing something a revelation you know it's coming up to let all the steam and the muck out um so there could be um there could be a revealing 
of information um, but it's not what we think it's going to be out of the blue and not what we think um, so it's going to be quite a shock I think mm. uh, when that comes 2023 mm. uh, so it won't be yet um, but when it happens it's going to be mm. we never saw that well, I've got March 2023, February, March, as the beginning of the Saturn return, the official one, but we feel it in the year before. There you go, 2023. Mm. So, um, let me see what else I can get here. Um, This, um, I don't know why, but I feel like there's going to be a, um, talking about water, there's going to be a rising up of water in the corner of Queensland there, around the Great Artesian Basin, you know, we have that big underground sea. There's going to be a rising of that water up onto the surface of the land or something like that around that time. Um, sorry, going to be happening in Queensland and it's going to bring, it's going to be permanent and it's going to bring um, prosperity to that area. I can see the birds coming and they're showing me animals coming. My problem is, uh, is timing because I could be 10 years away, but that's definitely going to happen. Um, there's something to do with water, um, it's on the edge of the desert, Simpson Desert, but it's not in the desert. It's in Queensland. So it's where it's drier in Queensland, northish, in that dry area, there's something's going to come up. So I'm wondering if there, when, when there's a change or there's an earth change that affects our east coast, that brings that up as well. You don't know, do you? Oh, so we could, we could funnel water there. Yeah, but it's not this. This is like a lake that comes up and it's it's pure water. It's not salt, I don't think. And, but I can see birds around it and animals. And eventually, in many decades, maybe centuries to come, there'll be a new city there. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> let me see what else. There's somewhere to invest. Yeah. But who knows the timing? Um, I do feel that there is, in New South Wales, in the country, um, there's going to be a group of people that will start, um, not a revolution, but start, um, or have an impact on um, changes to government in New South Wales. I feel like there is going to be, you know, like um, the Southern Cross banner had in the gold mines in Victoria, and there was this revolution of people. I feel like that's going to come from New South Wales. Now, I know we've had a lot of, lot of demonstrations and things like that, but this is a new covert of people. Um, I feel maybe it may be farmers. It may be farmers um, from that, you know, really rich area of farmland. I, I feel it will be farmers and I feel it will be farm women behind it. They'll be really angry. Um, what else? Western Australia is going to be much the same. It's just going to go on. Not going to be much change there. It's really the East, even South Australia is going to be much the same. Tasmania. Um, Tasmania is going to be much the same. There's going to be, it's going to be considered to be an island that, um, a go-to island, you know, like to get away from all the, the riots and the um, 
um, upheaval because there's going to be a lot of angry people in, in Australia and, and Tasmania less so. So I feel like it's going to be like the spot to go to to live for a while. It's going to be oh. a, a, an area where people can refuge. It's going to be quite a refuge type state. That's how it's going to be looked upon. That's a good area of investment, Tasmania. Tasmania. Um, well, you know, Tasmania and all that will eventually go when the Great Reset happens, but that it's good for now, good for our lifetime, because we won't be around when that happens. Um, um, and Victoria, where I used to live for such a long time, um, I feel Victoria may be at war for a while yet. I feel like um, uh, I feel like there's more trouble coming for Victoria. I'm sorry to say. Um, a lot of illegal money going into Victoria at this time, and so um, I feel like there's a war between. Um, between good people in Victoria, in government, and the underworld is quite strong in Victoria. So I feel like um, there will be, uh, I feel there'll be some battles still with Victoria. Uh, it's not clear yet. Oh, well, there's some really new ideas, Jennifer. Mm. I could be completely wrong, but it sounds fun. But there, otherwise, I, I just sort of feel and spirit is showing me that there's going to be some, um, a lot of battles next year with people. Some people are going to be, a lot of people are going to be very angry and a lot of people are going to be, um, it's going to be failures of crops as well. Failure, there you go. Failure and barrenness are both Saturn issues and right. restriction as well is another Saturn word. So there's going to be failures of crops they're showing me this is Australia wide and um, there's going to be um, deaths a few deaths of children as well so there's going to be a lot of anger and there's going to be a lot of um, people brook no tolerance for excuses so, Jennifer, what, what do you think is the best way for us as normal people facing all of these obstacles? What do you think is the best thing to do? I think the best thing to do is to, um, well, what I get told is to be kind to others. Um, but that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing is if you can even get one or two or three or a community of people together that you can share your labor with, you know, whether you, you can fruit or whether you can mend something or paint something or which is very Aquarius. Oh, so right. Saturn will be in Aquarius at the time of the Saturn return. Aquarius is community and sharing. Okay, so I feel like there has to be um a gathering together of people who can who can swap um, resources um and also for protection a little bit because some people are not going to be quite sane and um so that it may you may need to have um, people around you or to be in a place where you are protected um it's not going to be all the time everywhere but there'll be patches of it mainly because people will be so angry because I feel like it must be going to be sudden. So it must start suddenly next year out of the blue and people go, oh, my God, I've lost all my wealth or I've lost half my wealth. The people who are wealthy lose half their wealth. They think they're poor, um, which is not true, but they'll be angry about that because some of them will think they've been given wrong advice or they've been told they'll be safe because they're wealthy but they won't be you see no one no one will be excluded um and then um people who are poor get poorer can cope better mm. people who 
uh, middle class or upper middle class especially get hit really hard. So um, I would prepare for the worst and if it's not doesn't happen, yippee. Right? And if it does happen, um, you, you're okay. But um, I think if you're, if you're in country towns and things like that, go to meetings, go to all their stuff to get to know people because you'll need community. So yeah. out, out of the positive out of all that, because it sounds pretty grim, doesn't it? But it starts next year, I'm telling you. Out yes. of all that, I want to say, out of every adversity, we sometimes build new ways of doing things, which fits in with your set and return. So, you know, we may build communities and new ways of building homes, new ways of growing food, new ways of getting water, because there is technology that has been invented in America where you can buy um, um, a piece of technology that stands like a water tap that gets hydrogen and water out of the air. Mm. Right? You can buy that now. Mm. It's just super expensive. Mm. But, but it is there. It is there. Mm. So these things can happen. And it's through really the hard, hardship that Australia went through in the Depression years and into the 50s that many, many things were started like. Yeah, there the was country. no boom without the Depression. No. And, you know, Hills Hoist started, Ansett Airlines started, all of them finished school. All of them. Every industry yep. boomed after the war, after the Depression. So that ties in with what I was saying, you know, the sat and return, you know, hardship and then restructure. Yep. Um, but it is in the sign of Aquarius, which is communities sharing, reinventing new ways of of you know, utilising the strengths in community. So it could be that the end result of that hardship is we become more communal. I think so. so. I think mm. so. New, new, new systems that we haven't seen. So the other thing I wanted to say quickly too is that for years when I was in, um, I was in Geelong, as you know, for a while, um, I really wanted them to start a um, community college where people could go and learn how to sew, learn how to darn, learn how to knit, learn how to woodwork, learn how to cook, learn how to make bread, all this sort of stuff. Um, and I was re I did all this research to get it started and it just never got taken up. But um, this is what I think should happen. So if you've got any skills out there, if you know how to knit, if you know how to cook, if you know how to preserve, if you know how to grow a garden of vegetables, if you know how to fix things, this is a great time for you to go to a community hall or something and, and say, I am going to teach this um, and start classes and charge for it and earn a small, you know, living from it. And people will come. It's going to start next year. People will flock to you. It will grow and grow and grow and grow. But this will be a need that people will want to know about. Right? Oh, so this I is a great right. opportunity for those who are, who are really good with their hands and have done that all their life to teach it now before oh. people think, no, I'll go and buy it. But you're not going to have the supplies to buy it. Oh. So they're going yeah. to have to make it. Yeah. Hmm. That's right. Well, perhaps we can we can leave it on that note. I think in a roundabout way, you two, you, you yeah. are on the same page as me. Mm. And that that's often what happens in our readings. Yeah, I start in one direction and then you we meet at the same place in the end. Yeah. And that's what's so fun. So thank you so much for your time, Jennifer. And I'm going to really enjoy your arrival for the 14th of August where we meet in person in Burley Heads in the Gold Coast. It'd be great. Let's hope okay. that you don't cancel me. <laughs> yes. Say a prayer for that. <laughs> All right. Come and get you. Okay. See you later.